And from the depths of our bosom we cry hallelujah. 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 You may be seated for a moment, please. I have requested and greetings to you all that have joined us on the live stream and you that listen via other live stream as well. We welcome you all into the bayet of Almighty Yah as the simple few gather here on this Shabbat to give reverence unto him for he is great and mighty and there is none other like him for his name alone signifies the depths, the riches, the power of his multitude of strength that no man weapons, whatever are formed in our minds, can combat him. We have the power to do all that he instructs us, all his commands. When we began to realize and come to the knowledge of the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach, that he is revealed in our bosom. And we know that it is Yah because it concurs with everything that he has pronounced and said unto us. And realizing that it caused the fatness of his rejoicing to fill the bosom of Yisrael. And we rejoice exceedingly for the great riches of Yah. For we are in the time that our Zakhin reminded us. He told us that the last trump, the Teruach, it is the final one. And we are in the Akharith, the last days. Akharith, Yom, the last time of Yah. So let us, Yisraya, allow Yah to fill our bosom with His Imat above all things. We've allowed ourselves to be filled with folly and sin wickedness and all kinds of unclean things that produce nothing at all it is high time as the old ones would say that we hear what the ruach of omar speaks unto us as the old kiddushim would say it kindles the fire in the belly of yisraya it awakens the giant of his truth for he has written in the bosom of Yisraya, he has hatab. By the power of his fingers, he has engraved it in our bosom. And when we as a nation hear the aid, the witness that is certain of that truth, then we rejoice greatly and we shout. And the beauty of his presence for the abundance of his Berechaya, the blessings, the riches that he has showered down upon Yisrael. Again, we greet you all that have joined us. We say to you, Shabbat Shalom. May this Shabbaton of Yah be a tremendous blessing unto you as we have joined here in the city of Yerushalayim. We say to you, our Achot Tiffany and your Ach, your Ishwim, we pray that this song will enrich your home today and all of you that have joined us wherever you are, even to our precious bath there in Canada, our Achot Janice and those that are with her on the Shabbat, as she called, and, and uh, with those that had joined her in the fellowship and they will be headed back to Dominique for the gathering of the Mo'ad, the Mo'adem of Yawat. A beautiful Ruach rests upon them. And I want to say from Teshua community here, we certainly are precious Ochot for the tremendously generous offering that you sent on yesterday. We said, Toda, it shall be used for the kingdom work. It shall not be used for anyone to live frivolously and to live uh, in a lifestyle that is not ordained by Yah, for we have much. We have foods, we have clothing, and that is more than significant. There is nothing that I need to ask Yah for today, but that He would heal the body of Yisraya, 
That is the most important thing because there is nothing else that I need. I have clothing beyond my imagination and shoes for my feet. I have food to eat and a simple shelter to lie my head and to rest in the presence of all my young. I don't need a 10,000 square foot house. I don't need a 2,000 or 1,500 square foot. I simply need a simple room because my destiny is to see the face of Yeshua HaMashiach. That I may enter into the kingdom of my Abba. That is the only thing that is of value. It is not my pleasure, not my will, not my hafiz, but it is the will of Yah that be done, Yisrael. It is what pleases Him. Yoshua did all things to please, to hafiz, to cause the bosom of Yah to delight. That his Torah was pleasing. As he saw the demonstration of that power. And one of the most vilest of substance. That could ever be created. And that is the bazaar or the flesh of man. There is nothing like it. There is no stench of decaying like this. Because it is a dwelling place of every kind of vile, corrupt, sadistic, unclean thing that is imaginable to your mind. That one can perceive in the pattern of their thoughts. There's nothing more corrupt. So it is time that we progress. And move on from the threshold of things. And that we began to move on into the excellency. The power of his shaping. His forming. Of our minds and our beings. That we present unto him as your sure. Is the sweet fragrance of the offering unto Yah. And what your sure is alive in us. Then what we offer and present unto him, uh, it is the fragrance uh, of the sweet smell uh, of Yeshua HaMashiach. We must offer unto him that beautiful offering uh, that is acceptable. So Yeshua must come alive uh, in Yisrael. May he grant unto us this day, his wisdom, that we know how to, to operate in that wisdom. And let us understand that it is for me. The old song says, not my ima, not my avat, but it's me, oh yeah. It is one thing that in the early stages of my ignorance, in my puberty of understanding uh, the simplest form of Yah's truth, uh, it was one thing that I determined early on uh, that I cannot eradicate, correct the past, the future, enable anyone. I cannot uh, keep them from the destructive path of death and hell. It is a laborious task. Just to keep me in the right way. In the derech of Yah that leads unto uh, eternal life. Hallelujah. And so it will exert and exact my strength to save me. From this untoward generation of hell. I cannot save her. And I am doing a sorry job trying to save me. If it was not by the promises of Omar Yan Yoshua, I would be as desolate, beyond desolation, that I am today. It's only because His light, His Torah, 
fills my inward parts. And when the mind will direct me to go the opposite way, the lights of Torah brings me back into the pathway of his sadiqa, his righteousness. And when my will is to abandon the principles of Yah, it is the experience of his hukma, his wisdom, that caused my feet to be ordained by the commands of Almighty Yah, because the steps of a Sadiq man, they are ordered by Yah. And He order our feet, our steps in Torah. And he has ordered the house of Yisrael, our steps, to comply with what Torah commands. That has been the pattern. The task nith, that is the construct, what was established in the beginning. And everything that Yah does, it must conform to the task nith, unto the pattern. From the bearer sheet, from the beginning, to the akharif, to the very end. Everything must conform to the pattern. He has spoken unto Yisra'ah in parables or mishli. He has no intention for those outside of the camp to understand, to know, to discern. He intends for us as a nation of people to adopt, to know. In those outside of the camp, it is not by the volume of our speech, our words, but it is by the power of our lives that we live, that they will know it is a construct that is not the norm. It is not the normal pattern. It is at normal, I will, my friend. It is not the normal pattern for the mind of man. So it's not the volume of our speech. Our witness is greater than our speech. It is the power of what comes forth out of the bosom, the shots from the hearts, from the minds of Yisrael. That our aid, our uh, aid oath, our testimony is a power. It is not expressed by words of deception, but it is expressed by the power, the visual that man perceives that comes forth out of us. This is not the pattern that I know. And then they will ask you the reason for the trigva. Why? What is the amber of the light that shines from your forehead? It's because we are a people. We have de corrupted ourselves. We're filthy. We're liars. We stink. We're dirty. We haven't wiped even the waste from our buttock. We have not washed our hands in the basin of the dumb of your shoe yeah. that we can lift up hands that are chadosh, yeah. clean yeah. and pure before Yah. we still have uh, the stench of the vile odor that has passed from your rectum we bathe ourselves in that that is the truth. I'm not here to set precedents to appease the flesh. I will never do that. Remove me, Ya. Raise this young man, Yaramaya, to the Cassandra and these Ach, that they may declare even a truth that is beyond your perception to understand. I will die. 
before I do that. I will give my flesh over unto hell for the destruction of it. That peradventure in the end that Yah, by the whisper of the voice of Yahshua, that he may speak to a wretched, damnable, vile beast like me, and cause my eyes to be open to behold his splendor, his tefirech, the beauty of his excellence, the might of his power, that I may raise up in the latter days by the power of his ruach. There is no time to play. It's what's vitally important that messengers and men that hold the Torah of Yah in them, not in the bosom of corruption and dishonesty, but in truth, in his imat. And the power of Torah always reveals unto us the attributes of the Most High. You cannot understand the dynamics, the strengths, the volumes of his attributes, unless you're sure the power of true Torah is birthed in our bosom. We have birthed every damnable, wicked thing there is in our bosom. And now we're sickly. We have no strength to press beyond the veil of the flesh. This battle that we are in, it takes the supernatural healings of Yah. You need to be healed beyond the flesh. We need to be healed in the Re'ach of Almighty Yah in Yahshua. I want to begin this teaching on this week. I know that we are drawing near unto the Mo'adim. This is not a simple challenge here, even in my ruach. I have no intellectual learnings at all. I don't give a damn what anyone says. I don't have that kind of veracity, strength. I don't have that kind of sharpness. That is why I must constantly study the Torah. I must constantly. I cannot lay it down and wait for the season. I must always be concurrently with the season. We lay down the Torah for our most admired attribute, and that is the wickedness of our flesh. It stinks. And we simply do not give a damn about Yah. And so this teaching that it cannot be done in one little simple session or two or three. It cannot be done in 500. So what I will begin by the leading of the Ruach of Omariya is try to open the door of our learning that our ears will be attentive, that we will have the ability to adhere or to allow it to stay in our bosom. And we will take that and go beyond the opening of the door that Yah shall open unto us today through the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. When something is revealed, it has a real aspect. It is real. It is real. It is almost as one traveling down the highway, traveling, driving, beyond the speed limit, and then all of a sudden, without any expectation, they see this tremendous light begin to flash. And the speed of the oncoming car, it is in a haste. Our hearts began to thump faster. Our palms began to sweat. 
The only thing he can do is give you a ticket. But what few arise from our bosom. Yet when it comes to Yah, there is no fear in the presence of Yah. As the old ones will say, we come in dirty and we leave out dirtier, more filthy. I want to begin this teaching on the two witnesses of Almighty Yah. Jane him, but two. These are the eight of Almighty Yah. And there's one thing that the eight of Yah is. It is the evidence that the matter is true. That there is no alternative. You cannot alter it at all. Because the pattern the task needs has already been established. Now you may have a more dynamic understanding uh, of the two witnesses. We must understand that numerics or the numerology to Yah, it is of grave importance. And what has happened today, the true messengers of Yah, they truly do not have the time to labor in the Torah because the time is given to the labor among men, even among Israel, when the Grecian women, when they had the sense that they were not taken care of in the fashion, then there were those that were ordained as a king to look after the welfare, that these messengers could be given over unto the study of Lahak, to meditate, to study the Torah of Yah. That there will be a constant revival when they speak to us to awaken that which is dormant and asleep in our bosom. You cannot grow in the power of his faith and that which he has written in us is of no value and importance unless you shimach. You hear to obey, to walk in the light of it. To perceive the value and the importance of it. And so the true messengers with these that are charlatans. And liars. And deceivers of the people. And that corrupt the Torah. The people love it that way. They strengthen their vile hands. Give strength unto their lies. But when a messenger stands and speaks. No one has the hearts. To strengthen him today. No one gives from their bosom. Uh, to strengthen. The messenger today. There shall arise. To. Shanhe him. After. The pattern. Uh, the task. Neath. That is already written. It is one thing that our. Immaturity of our carnal intellect. We literally think that we can read uh, a ketuv here, a ketuv here. We can read in a sequential chronological uh, dialogue, and we think we have the revelation of the matter. It is not so. As our Zohin brought out to us, this is a mystery. It is one thing about the treasure tress. The trolls of the riches uh, are just not on the top. You must dig down uh, into the core and separate uh, and look uh, and look at all of a sudden the gem of gems uh, in the mist. But it was not on the surface uh, as you perceived it to be, uh, as you read it to be, uh, it was not revealed that way. You did not uh, exact the gem. Uh, of the surface uh, of those beautiful treasures uh, when you open the treasure trove. But you had to meticulously uh, through each piece uh, and you didn't even know the value of that which you had in your hand. You laid that to the side. And all of a sudden, to the eyes of the Ruach, yeah, focus us. There have been those that have soul paintings at an attic cell, at 
the home flea market that was some of the most renowned paintings of what they call the world, the most prominent painters of the world. It was a Rembrandt, and yet they sold it for $10. And by the sharpness of the keen eyes of inspection, it was worth $100 million. And what we receive from Yah, it is not just the surface. We must dig into the depths. That is why he said, in the beginning of all things, uh, he set a tazneeth. He made two great lights, one that was greater to rule the day, and the lesser one to rule the night. He made, from the begetting, he made two. From the bosom of man, he gave him a war man. And he gave unto them the instructions of Torah. She was from his bosom, just like we as Yisra'ya, we are from the bosom of Yahshua HaMashiach, from the Torah, the living word of Yah. And any time there is an it or a witness, it is a testimony that is according to the Tasneeth. According to the pattern, the construct of Almighty Yah. And I don't give a damn what we see in Torah. We must always define it. It must be refined by the Tasneeth. By the pattern. And it is vitally important. Because if we do not, we will begin to disengage. And begin to engage according to our perception of the matter. You will find yourself walking down an errant path. That is of no substance, no reward at all. The two witnesses of Almighty Yah. The word Shanaim, the number two, and the numerology of Yah, it has one value of importance. And it speaks of the volume, of the fullness, of the Eda, of the testimony of Yah. It speaks of the substance, of the fullness of Yah's testimony, and the witness is true. In the mouth of two the feth, the language, the loshon, the tongue, the speech. Let every word, two or three witnesses. And three is the half of six, which is very important we shall see today. Uh, that let in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every cold word uh, be established. We shall establish Yah's truth out of the mouth of the Novian, the prophets, the Novi. Not by me, not by you, but what has been written, established in the bosom of the Novi of Yah, we must hear. It is time out for our childish ways. It is time out for our immaturity. Your desire to feed us with meat. But because we are suckling babes. We cannot eat the fullness. Of the stay of bread. That's why we don't stay. We don't stand in the stay. And I speak to Yisra'ya collectively. Damn this wicked world. I'm not trying to speak a thing to them. I'm speaking to a house that's rebellious, that's full of sin, that's wicked, that defies Yah. And when we get the light of his Torah shining, the awe, the brilliancy, the brilliancy of the testimony of Yahshua, then the world will see us. The world will see us. And then only will we be like a light, sit in the city that sit upon the hill, that our light cannot be hid. Our light or the smallness of our light is hidden through our sins, our wickedness, 
our rebelliousness, our vile nature, that we despise no answer we hate. We despise. It is a horrible unto us what Yah speaks unto us. We don't like him to talk to us. We don't want him to talk to us. And we are corrupt to say, oh, I love that we are deceitful. And deceive our own mind. We are deceitful people. The heart is deceitful. Above all things. And it is desperately wicked. Who can know it? That's why Yahi weighs or he balances the ru'ah that is in man. Hallelujah. The two witnesses of Yah. I want to begin here with this most formidable pattern here in the Torah. And the pattern is persistent throughout Torah. If you would take time to examine the word T W O to Shaniyim or Shiniyim, you will find that that one word alone throughout the pattern of Torah, it is written 1,000 times in the book or better. And for you to get any kind of concept of it, you need to read or study all of those verses. And that's just the truth. We are people that think we have understanding, but we do not. Wisdom is the principal thing. But in all thy getting you, we need to get the bina, the bina, the ability to discern, to understand the wisdom of the matter, to know how to properly use it and utilize it, and to equate it with what that is the task needs or the pattern that is already there. That's not how we do it. We have a pattern of corruption in us. We examine things by our own intellectual proudness and our own rebelliousness and our own damnable stubbornness. And we literally think we have understanding. We don't have a damn thing, Israel. The man begins to grow in the power of Yah's iman. As we were reminded by Zachin Yarabiyah in the, his deliberate efforts to teach us that we that have the Ruach of Yah, there is no power to sin, to defy the Torah of Yah. Something is wrong in us. It begins here in us. When there is a deliberate effort to defy Torah and then you justify your twisted ways but yet you will never justify any of my ways isn't that amazing I want to begin here in the book of Bimet Bar as I establish the pattern I will show you where the two witnesses of Yah his jene him id, where they shall come or try. It's in the pattern. You cannot overlook that. And I will speak things that are so simple that it will amaze us the simplicity as I show us here in the Torah. Beginning here in the book of uh, Bimit Bar. As Yah promised unto Yisrael, the land of promise, He told them what they would encounter. And as Yah commanded Moshe, He said, I want you uh, among uh, the house of Yisrael, I want you to elect 12 men that shall go and spy out the land. The number 12 is synonymous with Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. 
the twelve Shalishim. We see the pattern in the beginning as Moshe selected twelve. And we see it in the end with Yahshua HaMashiach. He elected twelve and one was of the Ruach of Hashatan. Moshe elected twelve and only two, the Tazneeth. The pattern was established from the Bereshit as Yah began to create the lights. He began to create man. And from his bosom, it has already always been the Yisra'ah. And so they went forth to spy out the land. And this powerful people, the Anach, or the people of the Nech, and showed their resilience of power. They were mighty men of strength. And they were warriors of great strength. That's why you doesn't need cowards. We cannot be a coward. And we are cowardly when it comes to here. We will strengthen the hands of some of the most vilest and some of the most wickedest things. But when it comes to Yah, we will not strengthen the hands of those that labor among you, among you. We will not do that, Yisrael. But oh, how we strengthen the hands of the wicked. And so he sent them forth. And yet as the report came back, there were only two that had the heart to say, we can overtake the land. I want to begin here in Bimitbar. It's vitally important. As they began to search the land of Canaan, they were instructed by Moshe, Bimitbar chapter 13 and verse 8. It says, and of the tribe of Ephraim... And that is the name that is given unto the northern ten tribes of Yisrael. You notice that only ten gave a report that was against the instructions of Yah. And so Yisrael consists of ten tribes on this day to this time. They did not have the strength of Yah. And the word Ephraim it has no meaning. The meaning of it cannot be defined. But it is one thing that it denotes. It denotes a masculinity of power and strength. And yet the strength of man. That is important to remember. I want you to remember that. And yet in the midst of the strength of man. We have seen the task neath the pattern. That without the Torah of Yah. He is of no substance. No strength. No power. He has no fortitude to press beyond the laziness of his own corrupt, wicked conscience. And that's our state today. We don't press beyond our own wicked nature at all. We don't impel it. We don't destroy it. We admire it. That's why we are a nation of people that constantly... Uh, we will perform the same things over and over. If you lie, you're a liar. You will lie. You will cheat. You will steal. You will do every kind of damnable, wicked thing there is. They saw the massive forces and they were afraid. And of the tribe of Ephraim, Ephraim, he chose one mother name of Hosea, which his name implies the salvation, the deliverance of Almighty Yah. He chose him. It tells us that he was the son of Nah, The son of Nah. Now I will continue in this process. I want to establish this because these two spies, if we must use that, uh, that denotation of them... That they represent the witness of Yah. They represent the aid or the testimony. And it is the fullness of Yah's testimony. It represents what he says, what he speaks. His speech, what he has spoken. And what he shall do and what he will do. And that's the power of his Edah in us. His Edoth. We don't have it. Because if we had it, we would believe and trust the Most High, we will know that he shall perform all things according uh, to his testimony, his witness. He had told the children that I will give you the land. 
Don't be frightened. Don't be fearful. You go up. You take the land. It is full of milk and honey. It is a land of abundance. It represents uh, the beauty of Yah's kingdom uh, unto his house. We should not be a people with light, but we should have uh, the abundance of Yah. We should enjoy the riches, not uh, some house in the community of the wicked, uh, where your neighbors are faggots and every kind of unclean spirit. Uh. That's not what he meant. Yes, sir, I, uh. We shall eat the peri, the fruits of his mouth. The sweetness as the shira shira and the psalms of Solomon speak of the flagrant flavors of her mouth, his mouth. And how sweet the kisses were. And they were able to enjoy the fragrance and the sweetness of that Israel. Two witnesses. These are the men that uh, Moshe sent up. As I continue here in verse 16, I will skip verses for the expedience uh, that I will get to the crux of this. I want to establish the number two, first of all. It says in Bibit Bar 1316, uh, these are the names of the men which Moshe sent uh, to spy out the land. And Moshe called, uh, this is Moshe, he called Hoshea, son of Nun. He called him Yahweh Shua. He called him the salvation of Almighty Yah. He had the words of Yah. And Moshe, he represented the authority of Yah. No messenger can go forth without standing in the presence of Yah. And Moshe was a man that stood in the presence of Yah. He, he, he glowed with the brightness of Yah. And when Hoshea stood in the presence of Yah, in the presence of Moshe, it was like standing in the presence of Yah. If that is not the true pattern, then it will not stay so in the book. I must establish that. And if it's not established by Torah, then it is a damn lie. I don't care how you try to dress it up. Okay, you try to refine it. Uh, we must see from the task neath the pattern uh, of the precepts, uh, precepts, uh, statutes, the orders, the concepts. Here a little uh, and there a little. And they had the great opposition as Yisraya has today. The governments are giants today. They destroy the home. The welfare, the riches of a nation, of a people, you cannot resist it. You have no power to overthrow it, none whatsoever. And that is what a Nech represented. They were the people of the Nech. And the government has its grips around our necks. We are being suffocated we are being oppressed just like Yisrael in the land of Misrahim, of Misrim in Egypt. As they were oppressed, and so it is today among the true identity of the house of Yisrael. We have the oppositions that unless Yah removes them, they're not going to be removed, Yisraya. That's why he must raise up. And the witnesses of Yah, they must stand. You must understand the pattern. That's why we are people that are so gullible. I was speaking the day that Ach Yosipiya and I were out bailing the hay while our Ach Yosef was driving the tractor. But I said to him, son, do you understand why the world has taken away from Yisrael that there shall be no trust for no man? Because when the witnesses of Yah come, they will say that they are out of the gates of hell. They will not even know. They have no spiritual discernment. 
They have no ability to know what is of Yah and what is not of Yah. So this is perpetuated out of the bosom of the whore. And a whore trusts nobody. So the whore has taken the Torah of Yah, the word of Yah, and tried to confuse it that we trust no one. And there is a little bit of that damnness in all of us. And it's wicked. It is vile. It is unsavory. Trust no man. And I said, son, this is going to be the Achilles of the destruction of the people. Will Yah destroy his people? Hell yes. He will not sure have to make them stinky. But he will destroy them to the gates of hell. He will or not. He will kill them. Destroy them. That the remnant, the residue may shine. Move it along quickly here. Hallelujah. Be met by Numbers 14 verse 6. It says here. And Yahweh shoo up the salvation of Yah. And we must understand that this man, Hoshia, he was from the tribe of Ephraim. And one of the witnesses must come from the tribe of Ephraim. He must. The pattern, the task neath, is already established. And I will show you where the other one must come. Uh, and even the witness against Yah, it is in the Tasnath, uh, what tribe he must come from. This anti Hamashiach, he must come from out of the loins of Yisrael. Was not uh, Yehuda Iscariot, was he not elected? Was he not of the Ach? Was he not of uh, the heritage of Yisrael? He was a Yisraelite. And yet he was a son of perdition. And Yahushua, the son of Nun, and he speaks of one by the name of Caleb. And Caleb, the son of Yophani. Yochfani, he that will face Yah, his son, which were of them that searched the land, when they heard the report of these men, they rent their clothing as preparing themselves for the sackcloth. They tore their clothing. And when we hear the Torah of Yah, when we hear the lies in the opposition of Yah, even coming out of the mouth of those that you perceive you care for, it ought to be a renting of the veil. We ought to tell that damn garment of flesh. Destroy it. They rent their clothing. And they spoke to call all the company, of the being, the elect, the children of Yisrael, this is what they said. The land which we pass through to search it. He said not only it's a tough land, but it is exceeding. It is beyond tough. Oh, taste Yah, taste the land or the riches of our inheritance and see how rich it is. We don't want to taste that. That's why we are not, we don't gravitate to the Torah of the word of Yah. We gravitate to every kind of folly and foolishness. He said the land is not just tov, but it's beyond the expressive superlative to express the beauty, the strength, the vastness, the abundance of the land. He said it is exceedingly, is it exceedingly tov? He says if Yah have it if he is willing, if he delights in us. If the Torah of Yah delights in us as a nation of people, he had given them a Torah of life. He had given them his hearts. The Torah came from the bosom of Yah. It did not come from the bosom of Moshe. 
And when Moshe came down from the mount from the hair with Yah and saw the wickedness of the house of Israel, he held them down and Yah commanded him, I want you to carve out two stones. And the Sadiq of Yah must be carved out of these damnable stony hearts of ours. Our hearts and our Laba, our love and our Laba. He's going to take the messengers of Yah. He's going to take the witness of his Torah and the witness of his Ruach to shape and deform these most despic despicable, damnable things we call hearts. We want to think of ourselves as being nice and think of ourselves as being tough. But there is not one tough thing in any of our damn wicked flesh. It is time that we grow up. In time that we grow up. In good acting like children. Rak black a Uriah. A warrior. Oh I shall press my young ach. The men said that this land, if Yah delights in verse 8, if he have hates in us, I delight to do your will. Oh, yeah, do we delight to do his will? Do we delight to do the will of Yah? Yeah. That should be the most prominent thing in our bosom. Yes. That we have great pleasure to do his will. We take pleasure in corruption and sin just like this house. This is where our forefathers came forth and they established this house. We must break the shackles of that, Yisrael. If your delights in us, then no doubt he will bring us into this erach, this land, this space, uh, this country, this promise uh, of his bosom. He said, and he shall give it us. He shall nothan. He shall bestow that upon us in his pleasure. When Yah gives unto Yisrael, it is that he is not fond. He bestows it upon us for his pleasure and his delight. Because he delights his bosom to do tav unto Yisrael. He doesn't want to do evil unto us. But we procure evil in our rebellion, in our sins. Our wickedness, our defiance of Torah. He will give us this land which flows with milk and the staples, the sweet, refreshing uh, fragrance of Yah, his dabash, his honey. Only one command. Only one. He says, only marans. He said, rebel not against Yah. For my people are a rebellious people. He says, do not become like a mirroring heathen. Do not marat. Do not rebel. When you hear the Torah, do not rebel against Yah. Do not fight against him. Do not marat rebel against Yah. He said, neither Yahweh, be fearful, you of the people of the land. He said, for they are bread for us. It is the street, they are our lechum, to overcome them will feed our nephesh, our inner being, and let us know that Yah stands by his nation, his people. And he is the one that protects them. He is the one that guards the house of Yisrael. He said, they shall be bread unto us. Uh, he said, for their sin, their defense, their protection, their garrison, uh, he said, is departed from them. And above all things, uh, he said, Yah is with us. If Yah be for us, I don't give a damn who is against me. You can speak against me. You can try to bring me down. Well, let me tell you something to bring me down. You haven't done an excellent job. Because I am of no worth 
So to bring me down, you wasted your energy. To bring me down? He said, Yah is with us. Yah is in the midst of his people. Yah is our strength. For Yah is with us. Fear them not. Hallelujah. The perfect love of Torah casts out all fear. We think just simply saying we love someone, that that is the casting out of fear. Perfect love. How can love be perfected unless it is obedient? He that says he loves you and keeps not the Torah is a liar. So you got to have a perfect admiration for Torah. That's why this damnable thing, oh, I love you, you're a damn lawyer. Don't tell me you love me. You don't even love Torah. Man says he loves, Yah keeps not uh, his mitzvah, he's a lawyer. And there is no truth in him. I don't care if it's your sons, your daughters, your grannies. It makes no difference at all. I love you, daddy, and you despise the Torah of Yah. He is a lawyer. Oh, I love you, mama, and yet you walk in defiance of the Torah, the Shabbat. Remember the Shabbat and keep it set apart above all days. You are a damned liar. You are a damned liar. I don't give a damn about our emotions, how we feel about the matter. It doesn't mean a damn thing to you. I shall, my friend, there shall be no restraints on me. I'm not here for money. Isn't that a great blessing? Hallelujah. The defense is gone. Uh, Yah shall be with us. Uh, we will not fear them not, not. Verse 10. That this is us. Do we see the same pattern? I will show you the same pattern. It says, But all the congregation or the Edda, the gathering of the people, they ama, they babe, they spoke, they uttered. Their cry was vehement. A tumultuous cry stoned them with stones. Yeshua said, I am the Son of God. I am one, the one. And when they sought to start him, The task need is there. They said, Yah, if he's with us and for us. Yahshua said, I am Yah. And I'm with you. And they sought to stone him to death. You must search the pattern that has neath in everything. You read well. But it doesn't produce one damn thing at all. Reading is not going to get it. Period. You must labor. It must be heartfelt. It must be heart won. Do you understand? I can talk to a man and tell his depths of Torah knowledge. I can listen to a man and tell exactly what he has put in to what he is laboring to convey to me. Can you not eat something and tell by your taste bud the labor of that? Sure you can. Have you ever eaten something you say, what in the is this? I'm not going to eat that. It is truth, my friend. We have become so subtle in our wickedness that we finagle ourselves. We don't want to be genuine. Because we've been shaped by falsehood and falseness. So we don't know how to discern when someone is real. Because we're not real. So when someone is genuine, we don't even know. It is right. And I don't take it back. Stole him away from him. Who 
should I give you Barabbas of this one that calls himself the Mashiach? Give us Barabbas. Away with him. Impale him. And when these men spoke as oracles, as messengers of Yah, by the command of Moshe, they says, stone them, kill them with stones. And it said, and the splendor of Yah appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before the children of Yisrael. That his honor, his beauty appeared in their presence. What is that? Well, the ability for them to hear Yah speak. That's why your shoe had to give gifts unto men to bring us into the perfect refining of the Torah of Yah, that we would hear the Torah. We were hear it taught. And we have different degrees of the, of the lecturing ability and power of men to speak. Men that can speak so precisely and so specific or a matter that there are no holes in it at all. So everyone today wants to be a master. The master of all things. I've never desired that. Never! That every man has the ability to speak on the broadness, the depth, and the circumference of Yah. And so that man should dwell on the things of simplicity and teach that with a depth of experience that he, that he, uh, he is nurtured by Dela. This is a damnable, dumb, twisted generation. His people are satish. He said it. Blame him. He said it. We're dumb. We're stupid. It's like a, an unheard man that is ignorant trying to instruct someone in a specifics of a matter and they don't know a thing. And that's the way we are. Oh, I know how to do it. No, we don't know how to do it. We don't know how to get right. I shall come on. Hallelujah. Yah said to Moshe in verse 11, Is this the most high speaking? He said, How long will this people not? How long will we provoke Yah? Naats, how long will we despise his speech? How long will we abhor Torah, reject it, and accept the offerings of darkness and the tongue of the wicked over the tongue of the Sadiq? He said, How long will this people, Naats, hate me, despise me speaking to them, despise my fervent, burning passion for them? How long will they hate me? Will they provoke me? And how long, he asked, will it be until they believe me? What it is going to take for us to believe, Yah? That's what I said to Yosef, they did not believe these two witnesses here. And when the witnesses of Yah come, will they kill them? Will they kill them? And their bodies are going to lie in the streets of Yerushalayim. They said, kill these men. Stone them. For they have brought an evil report upon Yisrael. The Dazneeth is there. We just must have men to labor. But in the midst of your weariness of your body, you still must labor. You must endeavor. For it is the Torah that is the healing or the rafa of our minds and our bodies, our homes, our nation as a people. How long will it be before we believe Yah? And we all say we believe him, don't we? I know how we talk. We all talk the same. How long will it be before we truly believe Yah? Oh, it's not just an expression of your mouth. It is 
what is conveyed from the strength of your bosom. As the old ones would say, I know that I know that I know. They did not know that they know that they know what they were saying. But with great passion and what they sense with a tremendous motive of their love, they were sincere. Wasn't that beautiful last night, the call from Canada? And from our Ajo Janice. As they prepare to go to Dominica for the feast days. And the Ima there, the Zachin, as she asks, it reminds me when I was in Kenya, in Africa. I can imagine going to Dominica and sitting in the Ach. You enter into their homes and how kind they are. With the very little substance they possess, they're kind and generous. Sure they are. Teach you many things that you are liking. And that is the truth. Hallelujah. How long will it be until they believe me? Yah says for all the earth, the signs. Have not my signs been distinguished from all other signs? He caused the Red Sea to open. He caused the flies, the frogs, and death to come upon a nation that was mighty and powerful. And for somewhere in our simple mindset, we think that as uh, the flies and the millions and billions of flies died, uh, that they were all swept up, not so. The grounds were covered and the stench and the maggots. Then the frogs, as they began to eat the, uh, the, the flies and the dead flies and the matter and the decaying matter, and then they died. And the stench embedded in your home, that's because in us as a nation, we have learned the way of the oppressed and the well. I was reading in Carolina Living this morning, I simply breezed through the article, that the Americans, this nation, they have what they call a generic or they have formulate their own religious concept. I have no problem with that. Because Yah is not a religious concept. Yeah. He is the most high, Yisrael. Yeah. And I will say, damn all of their gods, their Baal, their lords, their Jesus, and all of them, damn them all. How long shall it be that we will not believe Yah? We have seen all of his oath which I have shown among them. We are not conscious of his oath, the signs of Yah, his markings among his people. We don't have the Ruach that has sealed us and marked us, our minds, with the perfect determination to stride and walk in the Torah of Yah. It is not difficult. When we transgress, we try to slither in some other way, it is difficult. Something is wrong in us if we don't have the ability uh, to consider and to love one another. Something is twisted in your damnable, fickle, satanic, wicked mind. Why? Because the only thing we must do is let you love the mind of your sure how much you let that same mind Kill that damn wicked, dirty, filthy mind of yours. Destroy it. Impel it. Your loss of your flesh and your spirit. And begun to walk in the Torah of Yah and perfect his identity, his clothing uh, that we're dressed in. We're people that do not believe. Only two came and sent we're able. The land. The pattern is persistent here in the book of Matitya. When your sure was before Caiaphas, Matitya, Matthew 26 and verse 60. As they tried to procure witnesses against him, this is what they did. It says here in Matitya 26, 
verse 16. But they found none. Yes, though many false witnesses, yet they found none. And the lies, and the lies came to false witnesses. Do you hear that, Yisrael? We don't even understand what the false witnesses are. I will show you the way of the false witnesses. I will show you what these two represent. I will show you the derrick of the ways of the false witnesses. And I will show us one of the most prominent battles of the two witnesses uh, of Omari Yah. That is why the witness of Torah and the witness uh, of the testimony of Yahshua, it is the fullness of Yah's power. You cannot say you have your sure and there's no power of the witness of Torah. You are a damn liar. You can have your damn Jesus and your damn Christianity, but you don't have the witness of the testimony of the fullness of Yah's power. And at least, and they simply found two false ones. What came out of their mouths? You got to understand the spirit that emanated out of them, which came forth. When the witness of Yah, when they speak, do we understand the tremendous uh, cataclysmic, cosmic mayhem that they're going to create? So if they're two false witnesses, then they must create the same kind of calamity in a spiritual realm that delude the eyes of those that perceive and think that they understand and know, and they don't understand well, I'm going to bring this home. You must well bear with me. I haven't preached in two weeks. So you might as well sit there. And I'm not going to stop because your belly is growling. Hallelujah. We don't see that in Walmart or Kmart or Dollar Mart. And they found two false witnesses. And the false witnesses, it was the fullness of Yah's testimony that this one shall be betrayed and he shall be impelled. That is the truth. It is the truth, Yisra'ya. That he should be impelled. The Tazneeth, the pattern is there moving a little further in the book of Gilyana? The two witnesses of Almighty Yah. This is the crux of the teaching from Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. Yah says emphatically, They shall not come. From an institution established by man. We've had those that say that they are one of the witnesses. Like this vile thing down here in Texas. Israel, Israel Hawkins. He is a deceitful and a liar. He is not of the tribe of Ephraim. He may be of the tribe of Dan. Whereby the false one shall arise. And he and his brother, they are, and were supposed to be the two witnesses. And don't you know that people buy that? And yet him and his brother were in disagreement. But yet the witness of the Tasneeth of Yah of the pattern, they were in one accord. They agreed and concurred that Yah, this land is exceedingly rich and powerful. And if Yah is with us, he will give us the land. These two individuals did not even agree on the name. But yet they say that they were, and that is purported, that he is one of the witnesses. I stand as a messenger today of Yah, that Israel Hawkins is a damnable liar, and he is not the anointed one of Yah. Hallelujah. Yah has not anointed him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you think it's you, man? I know it's not me. But I'm one to prepare your heart to receive them. That you trust Yah. And you will trust them. You see the multitude? We're just like the multitude. They, we don't want what is truth. 
They didn't trust the witness of the two witnesses, did they? But they trust the witness of the liars whose hearts were as corrupt as theirs. Who was as vile as them. That's our nature today. We trust the lies of the most repugnant and the most wicked testimony of lies. And we formulate and conjure in our minds testimonies of lies. But it's worth thinking about the testimony of Yah. If Yah be with me, no weapon. You can speak against me. I frankly don't give a damn. You can write against me. I don't give a damn. You waste your ink on me. Believe me, I will not waste mine on you. I will not take my breath to ostracize you here. Damn you. Leave it at that. Cannot go around. How you feel this morning, my Ema? All right, you feel it. So glad to see you. I'm glad to see you as well, you that have joined us. Hallelujah. And you all as well. Hallelujah. Glad to be home. I don't like to go places. Believe me. You may think that, oh, no, you may like to go. But I don't. I like staying at home. I like being at home. That's me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says here in the book of Gilgal Revelation chapter 11 verse 13. Did not those two witnesses, did not they rent their clothing? Did not they rent their clothing? The task needs must always be according to the construct what is already laid out. It says here in Revelation chapter 11 verse 3. Yeah? He says and I will give power. I will give. Uh, I will give my might. The might of my word. The might of my authority. The might uh, of my throne. My kingdom. I will give power to my. My. His possession. He is possessive. Uh, he says of my. Shenye, he, my two witnesses. My aid. Uh, and he said, and they shall never, they shall prophesy. They shall speak by the influence of the ruach, by the witness of their bosom, and their testimony shall be sure. He says, for a period of three and a half years. And he said, and they shall be clothed. He said, and they shall be clothed in sach, in sach, in sackcloth, sach. Did not the two messengers in the beginning rent their clothing? Will not these messengers rent their clothing? Did not the witness of Yah Yahshua, did not they rent his clothing? Did not they rent his clothing? They rent his clothing. And they shall prophesy, they shall speak, they shall nabah. They shall speak by the influence of Almighty Yah. The two witnesses that uh, bore false witness against Yahshua, they spoke by uh, the messenger of hell. And so shall these witnesses. He said, they are mine. And I shall give Koach power. I shall give power of my Torah, my word, that the things that they shall do shall be, be beyond phenomenal. There is no expressive terminology uh, to express the magnitude of the power. I know that our most simple, uh, impotent minds uh, cannot grasp that because we fill ourselves with every kind of damnable folly and wickedness. It's hard to get something through here. Our hearts are hardened and they're deceitful. Is it not given unto man? To be born and then die. Yet that should be one of the most profound teachers of us all. There's an appointment of death. And that should show us something is wrong in us. When we can blatantly defy Yah. And speak to him in a way that is so rude and crude by our actions. And never move beyond the plateau. Of our wicked ways. 
There is a kidney. You are clothed with wickedness. There's a disease there. There's a disease. And that's the truth. When it becomes a practice form of your lifestyle that it is administered from the governing source of your body, something is wrong with you. I don't care if you ever speak to me. I don't give a damn. That is the truth. You are more than sick. You're more than disease. You're beyond even the healing power of God because you have no evil now. There are places that your shoe went, he healed no one at all. And you cannot get the healing because of your own wickedness, your exploitation of God. It is. Stand back, Moshe. Devil of all, I'm going to kill them. He killed the babies. He killed the grandmamas. He killed the sons and the daughters. He said, Devil of all. Devil, pull them up out of the grave. Let me kill them again. He's not that way. You are a damn fool. He's not wrong. I'm going to kill them all. I'm going to kill their children and sons down to the third and the damn fourth generation. Damn them all. Cannot go around. Cannot go around. Oh, you cannot go around. Dura of Ea. Oh, you cannot go around. No, you cannot go around. You all sing that song again. I want to sing with you all, all right? Hallelujah. No, I sing because I have the joy of Yah. I don't sing because I have correct phonics of vocal pitch. I sing because I'm happy. I have the Isha, the riches of his happiness. That's why I sing. Hallelujah. And you're not going to stop me from that. Nobody. That I shall do, my friend. I shall declare his truth. And they shall sit in sack or sack, sackcloth. But I shall give my power unto them. Who shall, who will prepare the way and the hearts of these men? Only Yah. And we must see in the Tasneeth how he prepares a man to stand against a rebellious, wicked house. Did not they strengthen the hand of Caiaphas when it was time to brutalize and to impale Yahshua? Did not they say unto Herod, give us Barabbas? Do we not say, give me wickedness? And to hell with what is right. You will say to hell with Yah and his Torah. No, I am not speaking. This is our form of speech. And I can show you we speak to that according to Torah. That's how we talk to Yah. I am defiant. I'm going to continue in my resolve. And in my way. I don't give a damn what the Torah says. And so he says these men shall come. These are my two witnesses. And they're going to have power to cause death. When they speak it, it shall be. When they will say to that man, curse me you and your wicked daughters and your sons, you shall be damned in the presence of God. And they shall. And they shall. You don't have to buy it. But it is still the truth. He said, these are my two witnesses. The messengers that shall speak by the influence of the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. These liars today are not speaking by the influence of the Ruach HaKodesh of Yah. They're speaking by their folly, their misinterpretation of Torah, their emotions. They're not speaking by... The strength, the power of Yah. They have no naba, no prophecy. They're not influenced by Yah. They're influenced by the crowds of the people. And telling them nice things. Hallelujah. What they think are nice. But it's sowing death in their bosom. I'm trying to eradicate out of us the poison that has uh, 
that has uh, just uh, risen up from our bosom that we have not uh, extracted from us in a properly, proper time fashion. We've held on the things that are so damned about wicked because you're wicked. We love wicked things because we're wicked. And there shall be two aids, shall they him, witnesses. And the testimony shall be full of my power. It should be full of my authority, who I am, and what I am. There is no way. I know that there are those that say that these individuals, it shall be Moshe and Elijah. Well, they come in the same pattern of Moshe and Elijah, but that's not so. That's not so. They shall be those, those individuals, they are prepared by Yah. Did Yah prepare Moshe? Did he see him face to face? We think that Yah, you think that he's going to leave man, his elect, his, the bosom of his heart alone. He has never done that. And that's why the enemy has used men to raise up one another. It is not Yah raising up these cowardly men. Come on, if you're mad at strength, you can face me. It is right. I had a man call the other day and said to me, Man, when I see Ak Shimri and Yawasad Ak and Yosepeya, I'm going to bust them. I'm going to slap them in the face. I said, Slap me. Slap me. Don't slap them. They made an infraction and they quoted something. I said, What did they say? The person told me what they said. I said, well, I say the same thing. Now, you take it out on me. No, you didn't say it. I say, I am saying it. I am saying it. It is so. Yeah. Now, take it out on me. Well, I am not concerned about this individual. Uh, that he would do that because he would be frightened to do that. You understand? And so, in that essence... We have not taken upon the burden of the yoke of Yeshua HaMashiach, the witness of his truth. We don't defend that. We don't defend that which is righteous. I defend Yisraya. I defend Yisraya. And I'm not going to back down from that. But it will tell us our sentence too. Hallelujah. The witnesses say their defense is gone and the defense of the world is gone. The cell, the cell is gone. The cell, the defense, the protection, there is none. And we as a people, we are waiting in the wing that our protection is evading day by day. You all said, I shall send my two witnesses, but there's a preparation for them. And the only way you're going to understand that preparation, it must be expressed out of the book. Quickly here in the book of Yeshaya. <clears throat> We greet you all that have joined us, Yah's riches upon you. The book of Yoshaya uh, Isaiah, chapter 60, chapter 6. I would have begun here at verse 5. Let me read and I will conclude the whole uh, essence of this reading here out of the book of Yeshaya. This is the preparation of the witnesses of Omar Yah Yisrael. And the age, the testimony, there is evident that the thing that they speak, it is true. It must resonate from them. So the thing that they say, if one is an it, a witness of Yah, it must be of truth. When Moshe saw Yah. When he came down among Yisrael, his, his whole presence shone like the awe that Yah is. And when these men stand up in Yerushalayim, in the city where the shalom of Yah is taught, they're going to stand up in the bosom of the heart of true Yisrael. Yeah. 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 And that is the truth. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. He speaks to Yah because there is an impending destruction upon Yisra'yah. And the Melech Uzziah had passed and sin was rampantly. Your shoe has gone to the uh, Sheol, hasn't he? He has gone to the grave, hasn't he? And that's where we have left him. 
He has not arisen in our bosom. And so Yah says there must be one that will go and stand before the presence of this rebellious people, but that one must be equipped. And this is the Tasnuth, or the Tasnith, the pattern of that. Isaiah 6 verse 5, then said I, he says, uh, uh, and when you see the word woe, it is, uh, uh, it is a cry that is beyond, it is a cry of shrillness. It is a cry beyond the capacity of one's volume of their diaphragm uh, to cry out. So when you see the word woe, W-O-E, you see the word uh, e, it is a shrilling sound. It is a passionate cry. It is beyond one's depth to control the volume. He cries, woe, woe is me. He says, for I am dumb, I am undone. I am cut off. I'm so far away from Yah. I'm a man that is undone, is what the Nobi cries. He says, because I am a man of me, my lips or my safa, my language, my speech, it is unclean. And he said, and I dwell in the tovech, in the midst, the centrality. I'm encamped about in the midst of a people. Are we the people of Yah? Of unclean language. The lips are tome, safa, unclean language. He said, from my eyes, this is it here. He said, from my eyes, have seen the melech. I have seen the king. I have seen the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Oh, look up, our king draweth nigh. Yeah. He said, I have seen the king. Moshe had seen the Melak, the mighty one of Israel. Those messengers, like Elijah, they will see the king. They will see him face to face. I don't know of a man in the earth now that has seen that. You may know him, but I don't know him. Or oh, there are men that say they have seen him. And these men are full of their putrefied folly weak men i've seen the power of my king in his revealed torah he says now my eye and my eyes my eyes are open i have seen the king i have seen the king yahweh of sabah he is the one that prepares the armies of the spiritual ram to fight against the encroaching of hell, uh, the powers of darkness that war against the seat of his throne. This is where the seat of his throne is in our Lama. This is where they casse his throne, where he sits, where he resides, where his Torah, where is impressed upon here. He said, I have seen him. My eyes have behold him. He said, then flew one of the Sarafim, one of the mighty ones of Hashem I am, to me. And look at what he did now. He says, having the Ritzpa, the living of the live coal. This is the only word that, uh, the, the word Gael for coal, but this is the Ritzpa, this is the Ritzpa, this is the living power. And the burning word of Yah's Torah, like Jeremiah said, uh, it is like the fire, it is like the Ishanap uh, in my bones. Uh, and these messengers of Yah, when they speak, uh, their words will consume the power of their words, will, will be bonafide. Uh, not cowardly men like me and you, a men of strength, men of integrity, men that honor the throne, they have seen the king. I've seen the Melech. And the Sarafim brought the call, the Ritzpa of Yah's call. He did not just pick it up with his hands either. He said, and he having a Ritzpa, a call in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues. 
He had taken the coal with the tongue from off the mitzbeach of the altar of Yah, and then he laid it, he laid it upon my feth. And he says, Hine, oh lo, my, my, this has touched my lips. And it touched his lips for this purpose, Yisra'ya. You must understand. Wisdom is important. But we need understanding. Because if you don't understand this, you don't understand the two false witnesses. You don't understand the two ways. You don't understand what they shall battle against, and it is vitally important. He laid the coal upon my lips, and he says, your avon, your perverse manner of speech and talk, your way that is wicked and corrupt, that ostracize Yah, even your guilt, condemnation of all of your transgression, you are purged from that. Now, that's the power of your shua. Now, what Yeska represents, he represents in the task, needs the pattern of your Yeshua HaMashiach. For when he came up out of the waters of Emus, and he looked up in the heavens, were open, and there stood the men like the king of power. We cannot get away from the task, needs. At this generation of intellectual uh, deducting, uh, we are trying to transpose what Yah says uh, and transcribe it uh, to what we think it is, and we are damn fools. Yeah. You cannot. Yeah. We must look at it in the light of how Yah caused the bosom of men to write it. Oh, I'm not done yet, all right. We'll preach a little bit today, all right. We'll, we'll get something to eat. Hallelujah. 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 When he laid his hand upon my mouth, he says, your iniquity is taken away. One, and then the other thing he said, and your hata'im or your sins, they are kafah. The atonement. There's a reconciliation. And that is the only way that when these messengers speak, that we as Yisra'ya, unless we receive the words of their mouths, then there is no atonement. There is no kafa, just like Yahshua, unless we believe what he says, there is no atonement, Yisra'ya. We can try to work the order of the offerings, the sacrifices of the Torah. It produces nothing at all. It brings no liveliness or perfection in us at all, Yisra'ya. You can think it's your tough works, your kindness, your niceness, and all of these little uh, putrefied uh, things that you think uh, catapult you into someone or somebody. It is your own damn deception that will take you to the gates of hell. It is the Torah of Yah, it is the living power that atones uh, for our sins. Uh, they offer up the offerings and sacrifices, and yet they left the bed of Yah and went and sinned willingly. Yes. Go and sin no more, as he tells the woman, uh, the assembly. Go and sin, you've been caught in all kinds of adulterous acts. We worship all kinds of gods. Your God, your wife's God, your children gods, they dirty as dogs. Uh, and you worship them. All these, my children, my grandbabies, oh, I'm so proud. Damn them. Uh, I have no pride. Uh, that's why you are falling. Uh, you are haughty. You are arrogant with them. And that's why destruction is coming. The living power of your Torah. It doesn't mean a damn thing to us. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. I have no pride. I have no pride in me. I'm not proud of nobody. I'm not proud of me. I'm not. And that is the truth. Proud of some wicked, hoish grandbaby, a hoish daughter, you're a fool. I'm not proud of them. Hallelujah. Proud that you are my brother? Nah. I rejoice among Yisrael. He said, Your sin shall be purged. Verse 8, he said, Also I, Yishanach. I heard the voice of Almighty Yah, the sovereign Yah, saying, He said, I shall send someone. He asked, Whom shall I shalach? Whom shall I instruct to go to sin? Because the responsibility is not one for the faint of heart. When the messengers come, it is not for the faint of heart. This is the 
Tasneeth here that I will show you the condition, what they will battle, and the reason, and who they will speak against. We think that it's they're coming to speak against the world. Well, Yahshua said, I come not to destroy the world, to condemn the world. Why? Because the world is already condemned. He has already condemned this wicked world. He's coming to show the corruption of the house of Yisrael. And Yah's going to weed that little damn house. And each one that has the seal of Yah that do not, he's going to destroy them. Just like he said to Yeskel, you call for the one in the city with the ink horn. And you go through the gates of Yerushalayim and you mock them. You mock mama, you mock daddy, you mock babies. And those that have not mark, kill them all. Damn them all, kill them all. Kill the babies, kill the mama, kill the granddaddy, kill them all. I know it seems somewhat insane when I say that, but he's going to my faith to move. That's Yah. He said, kill them all. Kill every last one of them. Kill the babies. That's harsh. Well, to you it seems harsh, but that's truth. And truth is always harsh. That's why we get upset. Tell that, my friend. I shall. I don't feel tired yet. When I get there, I will stop, all right? Don't worry, we'll eat today, okay? All right. We have food. Don't worry about that. There, there are folks listening to me snacking now. How about that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yah says, uh, I heard the voice of the sovereign, Yah, in verse 8, saying, who shall I shalak? And who will go for us? He's talking to the host of Hashemayim. He's not talking to Yahshua. He's talking to the word. He's talking to the elders that sit before him. And all of this in the Tasneeth, it is vitally important. Then said I, the Nobi of Yah said, Then said I, here I am. Send me. He said, I'm ready. Send me, Yah. The messengers of Yah, they would declare, here I am, there is no sin in my loins. There is no foulness because it cannot be. It cannot be. It cannot be. Because if it's so, then you will be consumed by the very wrath of Almighty Yah. He says, I'm ready. And then what Yah speaks unto him in the next few verses he declares unto this nobi the blindness, the iva, that's blindness, the iva. It is without sight, without wisdom, without knowledge of Yah's Torah, that the blindness that shall come upon the nation, and then above all the destruction that shall come, shall not that be destructions after the two witnesses have finished their work, then the destruction of Yah's hand as this ach. So, verbally, explicitly brought out to us the value and the importance that this is the last one. I received an email, someone said, I tell you that truth was a truth. And it was. It should have been like the old ones would say, make me want to get up and run. Someone said, that truth, that was a truth. We're pulsating, profound, got down to the depth of all of our corruption. And we still did not offer the sweet fragrance of an offering unto you. He's sweet, I know, yes, oh Yeshua, sweet, I know. It's a wonderful thing to be sweet to each other. And when you have encroached, then... The only recourse you have is to be sweet. You've done one wrong, just cover that with sweetness. But you intrigue your akron, just go back to sweetness. You entreat your achot wrong, go back to sweetness. We entreat one another wrong, go back to sweetness, kindness. And offer up the fragrance of the heart of Yahshua. Hallelujah. I'll press on here. Hallelujah. He says unto him in verse 9, And he said, 
Yah spoke. He said, go tell this people, hear Shemach, you indeed, you hear the messenger, but being or understanding the ability to perceive and to discern that this man speaks out of the bosom of Yah and you don't trust him, they're not going to discern that they are the messengers of Yah. That's why they're going to kill them. That's why. Those in the Tasneeth could not discern that they were the messengers of Yah. That's why they say stone them. Stone your sure. The pattern is there. It's already there. He said they don't understand. They have no ability. He says and ra'a to see, to inspect. We don't inspect the damn thing. The gatherings, they search the Torah. To see those things that Shaul and, uh, uh, and uh, Shaul and uh, I know his name. Silas to see if those things were so in the Torah. We don't search a damn thing. That's the nation of Israel. They hear something and they repeat it. They read something and they think they have the, the spiritual depths of that. And you don't have anything man, woman. Sit down. Hallelujah. Wasn't it so beautiful that email last night? I enjoyed them. Hallelujah. You all are welcome to come here anytime you're in the States. You come down to visit us, our Achot Janice, and bring those precious baths of Tizayon. Yabrach. Hallelujah. He says, um, you have, you, you see, you ra'ah, you inspect. You consider the matter, but indeed, you don't understand what you're seeing. He said, for the levim of the hearts of these people, he said, they are fat or they are dark, darkened. The whole sheikh. Our hearts are darkened by sin. Are not the two witnesses coming into an element of such darkness in the earth that sin is rapidly the coming for the heart of Yisrael. All of these things, are, although they are figurative, they are literally, uh, we, got to, we got to deal with the task, need the pattern that has always been established. Our hearts are darkened, Yisrael. It's full uh, of fatness and sin. We love sin. We love wickedness. That's why they must speak, they must prophesy by the, by the influence of Yah's mind. And everything they say, it will be, they will be the conduit of Yah's mind. It's not Yahshua the conduit, this thing we call Yahshua the flesh, where it's not the conduit of the heart of Yah. And they shall speak the mind of Almighty Yah. They shall come in the fullness of his testimony. Yahshua was he called because he was with the Abba. They shall come at the end as the Shanayim of Yah, and the testimony shall be full. Yeah. Yeshua then calls fire to come down with these shell. You can pray and cause the fire to come down. He said, Kefa, stop that, boy. With these shell. These shell. These shell. He did not destroy, but these shell. These shell. In this weak pattern, a man that has been reduced to beggar reform because of sin, these men must stand in the presence of the king. Because we know what revelation is about. Yachahan said, and I was on the Isle of Patmos for one thing, for the revelation of Yeshua HaMashiach. That's what it's about. And they shall bring the fullness of the revelation of Yah. And they shall demonstrate that in the power of Almighty Yah. So Yahshua didn't call the fire down to consume them. They shall. They shall. Hallelujah. May I proceed? I shall. Hallelujah. Uh, hearts, he said, for the levim of these people are darkened, and their ears are heavy, and, sh and shut their eyes, and they have shut their eyes, at least they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand their heart, and understand with their heart, and then they are converted. And then they shall be healed. It is one thing that we can see the pattern. Do you see the same pattern here? When one's heart in the better sheet. When Yah said to Moshe, he said, go down and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Are not we of the same state of those of Egypt? Our hearts are hardened. 
And every time he will go, he was hardening his heart. So we don't understand our state. Every time Moshe went to him, you harden his heart even the more. And when we come to that state of mind where our hearts are so hardened, we cannot move beyond what we are. You are a damn damnation unto Yah. Well, I don't believe that. Well, Yahudah, he was with them the whole time. And he hardened the heart of Pharaoh. The pattern is there. Because he was an entity on this self. Uh, and we all think about our own individuality. We're individual. We got our own individual concept. You don't have a damn thing. Uh, he hardened his heart, didn't he? He was fat. His house was rich. And we were rich with our own uh, arrogance uh, of our own deceived uh, substance of a damn wicked heart. Uh, so he's going to send the witnesses. The fullness of his testimony. He said, no, you're going to see my full testimony now. Because I'm going to rip, I'm going to tear. Who shall go? Only the one that has seen him. Only the one that has been in his presence. He is the only one that's qualified to go. He is the only one. Verse 11, then said I, O oh, sovereign Yah, how long? How long shall this be? And he answered, how long shall they witness against the nation of his people? He says, until... The cities be sh uh, until they be wasted. He said, I'm going to crush them. I'm going to devastate them. I'm going to bring them down to the gates of hell until the cities be wasted without, without inhabitation, that they will be desolate. Men shall be like zombies, no life in them at all. And that's what sin has done to Yisra'ya. We are zombies. We have no excitement when it comes to the hearing of the Torah of Yah. Nothing excites us. We are dumbfound. We are we're like fat pigs, what we are like. His nation of people. Because our hearts become fat, darkness, and sin. Because we use it for the covering of wickedness and sin, my Achim. He took the coals, the fire of Yah. And he sat it upon his tongue. And his iniquity, his oval, was purged from him. We need this living fire in us. It's Torah. To purge us from our damn wicked ways and our filthy ways. I was talking with the Zachim the other day. And I said to them, I said, We may not know of a prophet in the sense he is a nobi. But Yah never leaves his nation without a prophet. He never. It may seem as though that there are none, but they are prophets. They are those that are genuinely of Yah and they're strong, mighty men of great strength. But the enemy has always done things to, to segregate the house of Yisra'ah because when a prophet comes in the midst, uh, everyone thinks he knows as much as the prophet. That's this nation. We know as much as everyone else knows. And that's just not the truth. Instead of us teaching, we ought to be taught. Instead of you trying to instruct, you ought to be instructed. It is right, my friend. Yeah. At any time we are men and leaders, we don't ever instruct. Something is wrong in your damn twisted mind. I don't care what I do, I instruct men for their strength and their wisdom. I don't care how you collect together, you instruct men. And after you do all that, then you gather for a moment, just sit down and refresh one another. If it's nothing more than a testimony. We don't want that today. I don't care if I'm working in the garden. I don't care whether I'm digging a ditch. I don't care whether I'm bailing hay. It makes no difference. You don't sit there quiet. You instruct always. Even when a parent talks to the children, they're instructing them. When they're doing right, they instruct them. And that's the way it should be. Hallelujah. As the old folks would say, it's more than two ways to skin a cat, isn't it? I don't know how you're going to skin a cow the way we skint that cow. Ah, Simeon and I, but if it's more than two ways, I show me the easy way. Hallelujah. I was sitting last night just pondering the garden as we began. I'm thinking about next year already. And tomorrow is not promised. But I came up with an idea. I said, this is going to be the best thing to work for us. I'm going to do it this way so that we can keep. Our gardens replenish. I know exactly what to do. A simple solution. Do you hear me? A 
It's going to work too, my friend. It'll work. So my mind is always thinking on that for the house of Yisra'ya. How do we refine this? How do we make this better? How do we make it prosperous? That should be your desire too. Can I move on some? I'm not going to finish this today, but we'll get back to this. I had promised the ark that I would get to one specific point. I may not get to that because we are people that we love things that are microwave. We want to hear it just for the satiation of the moment. I like to do things in details and show you the very tasneeth, the pattern that you will understand. You have something to draw on instead of our emotions. We'll draw on truth. Hallelujah. 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 He said, the land shall be wasted. He said, it shall be without inhabitants. He said, and the houses without man, and the land shall be utterly desolate. Shim Amma, it shall be destroyed. We are a desolate people. We have not the living power of the lively stone of Yahshua, the chief cornerstone whereby everything is erected for Amma. He is not the gem of our minds, Yisrael. He is not. He is not the constants in our mind. Everything but him. So the land is desolate, the thought of Yah, it is a barren land. There is no fervor of a fire of his truth burning down into the depths of our bellies. We walk as a desolate nation of people. We have become fat. We have become talking about the sins of corruption. He must sin. The two witnesses shall not far proceed out of their mouths. This is the same Tazneeth of the pattern as the seraphim, as they came unto uh, to Yeshai and placed the coals upon his tongue. They shall speak with the fire of Yah's truth. And it shall purge out. And those that have uh, the seal of Yah, they shall be the ones uh, that shall be delivered from the yoke of darkness and hell. Yeah. I'm going to take this thing to the end, all right? I will open up the door whereby you will go inside, uh, and then you can search the beauty of this for yourself, all right? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, the land shall be desolate, everything shall be destroyed. And verse 12 here, and Yah has removed men. When I see that verse, and I've read this countless of times, I've used these verses of this katve, the katuv, these katuv here many times. But this has always been, this, this, this is a shocking, startling word here. And Yah has, and Yah has, Yeshaya chapter 6 verse 12, Yah has removed men. Far away. At times it feels as though he is so far from us, isn't it? He has moved men far away. And there be a great azuba or forsaking, a desertion, a great forsaking in the midst of the land. We are, as Yahshua says, brothers shall forsake one another we shall despise one another. Yisra'ya will forsake each other for the cohabitation of some of the most vilest and wicked ones. We forsake the fellowship, and he commands us, forsake ye not the assembling of yourself. As we see the yam of Yah draws near. Do you understand that? We don't want that today, Yisra'ya. He says, and even there shall be a great forsaken. Did they not forsake Yahshua? Is not the task neath established? Did that they all turn and go their way? And the only thing that restored them was the Yahshua, the word, the Torah of Almighty Yah. And that's the only thing that's going to bring us to the resurrection of Yah and Yahshua. That we will not love our lives unto the death. It's going to take men of this power that have seen the king. Uh, and they're going to stand. They're going to rebuke. Uh, they're going to ridicule. They're going to cast down. They're going to destroy by the power of Yah's commands. Uh, and what they speak, it shall be. It shall not come to pass. Uh, it shall be in that day. It shall be in that time. That is the truth. Who shall go and warn 
and bring judgment of Yah upon a nation. But unless Yah sins the man, the men. And by the way, these shall be two men. And that is why the enemy doesn't want us to trust man. The number of man is six times two is twelve. That represents the whole house of Yisrael. One day I will teach on some of the numerology of, the, of Yah to show us the significance of Yisrael, each number. I will do that. It will not trouble me if any of you are going to do that. I have no compunction with that. You simply prepare yourself and labor in the Torah of Yah. And look at the word one, look at every verse, what it says. You don't need no books. You, you see the definity of it. Huh? That's all you have to do. Huh? Hell was spent two hours in Kmart. A dollar man, come on, talk to me. I'm not going to stop saying that. You don't give a damn about Yah. We smile and get excited about that. You know, if I spend two hours there, what do you think the world is doing? No, I spend 20 minutes there at the max. I don't have time for it. I will spend two hours in no place unless it's Yah's house. I like to hear the Ach preach. I do. I don't care how simple the message is. I don't care how simple my message. Hallelujah. What we do, we just study the Hach, study the Torah. I want to move here. I, I want to get a certain to a certain point today. I must get this. Hallelujah. There was one a nobi by the name <coughs> Zachariah, Zachariah, the prophet in the book of Zachariah, chapter four. That he speaks of the utterance of the profoundness of the time that we are in and shall be in the Akarith, the last days. That he gives us a witness of those two that shall stand. And they shall speak by the witness of Yah, of his testimony and his Torah. If they have not the testimony and the Torah of Yah in them, if they speak not according to that, there is no light in them at all. They must speak by the testimony of Yah and the Torah. And if they don't, they have no light in them. And every true witness of Yah must declare the power of that. And so the Nobi Zechariah, he gives us great explanation and understanding of those two that shall come. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 11. Then answer uh, he speaks unto Yah and says to Almighty Yahweh, he said, what are these Shanaim, these two Zayith, or the Aleph? And the Aleph tree represents the anointing, the oil of refreshing. He said, who are these two Aleph trees? Listen now, upon the Yami, upon the right, upon the right, there are two, upon the right side of the menorah, there are two. Upon the right side, which represent the menorah, represent the seven ruachim of Yah, the seven spirits of Yah, the ruachim, that is what the menorah represents. And that's why the menorah shall always burn in Yisrael Yah. In the bed of Yah, the lamps, the menorah never went out. So it is in the house of Yah, our tabernacle, the menorah of Yah should never go out. But he says that we're full of darkness. So we're full of darkness, then the light has ceased. If it's full of darkness, then there is no light. If it's full of darkness, there is no light. You've never looked at someone and just seen the darkness in their eyes? I have. Full of darkness. Hallelujah. He said, what are these two olive trees upon the right, the Yomin, side of the menorah, the candlestick, and upon the Simul, side thereof? Who are these two? What does these two olive trees, these anointed ones, what does it represent? And I answered and said unto him, what? Are these two olive branches that represent uh, 
the very fragmented house of Yisraya, Ephraim, Yehuda, which should be Ikat, with Yah, as Yah, which through the two golden pipes, empty the golden, or the Zahab, the splendid, or thereof, they shall pour out. This is the Tazmith. They shall pour out the excellence of Yah's oil. When they speak, it shall be a refreshing, it shall be an oil of refreshing to those that have been sealed until the day of promise. And when they speak, it shall be a torment of terror unto them. Every messenger when he speaks. I don't care if he talks about love. I don't care if he talks about kindness. I don't care what the man preaches on. It shall, it shall tear in the depths of our own deceitful imagination, our hearts. It shall rip to the core of that. I don't care what he teaches on. I don't give a damn what he preaches. It shall do that. It shall root out and tear out and pull out the dross. Teach on love, you show me what little love I do have. Teach on kindness, you show me that I am not kind. It should always bring about the judgment, the mishpatim of Yah. He makes himself known unto us in that fashion. Yisra, yeah, hallelujah. In verse 13, And Yah answered me and said, Do you not, Yada, do you not understand, perceive? Do you not have the interpretation, the wisdom of what these are? And I said, no, my sovereign great master. Then said he to me, hear this, Yisrael. He says that these are the two anointed ones of the Yitzcha, the anointed ones, that they shine with the pureness of the oil of Yah. These are the two anointed ones that are my, now that's important, that stand or the stay or stays. We must see the pattern of that to understand it. It must be in the bed, the house of Yah. He said, these are the two anointed ones that are my, they remain. They endure the very opposition of hell, the battle of death that remains, and they stand by the sovereign. They stand by Yah of the whole earth. These are the two ones that stand. These are the two ones that are mad or stay. Stays. S T A Y or S T A Y S. In order to understand that. And I'm going to close when I bring this to our revelation because I don't want to put too much on you today, all right? He said, these are the two anointed ones. He said, these are the Yitzha. They are the one that shine with the pure oil of Yah in men. It's sad that we can't see when somebody is shining with the light of Yah, isn't it? His oil. When I worked at my last employer, of course I used to always use Nivea cream and when I would go to work, my face would be shining for my skin. And I never forget this woman that worked with my Isha as they worked at one place during that time. She knew my Isha, so she knew me by the way of that. And she would always say to me, boy, she was a country gal too. Your face show me shyly. What? Of course, it was nothing but the Nivea oil. And my face, I liked it shining like light. I had my face shining and glistening. Oh, it would. But of course, during the day, it would wear off. Who are these two? Yitzcha. They have the shining of the light of the oil of Yeshua resting upon them. He said, these are my two witnesses. Now, we must understand in Yah's house, is not our body the tabernacle of Yah? Is this not the dwelling place of Almighty Yah? Then the pattern or the tasneeth must be revealed unto us, and we must understand that. I want to take you to this in the book of Melahim, 1 Kings. It is vitally important that we understand Wisdom is principle, but we need understanding. And everything I teach on this, you're going to see the pattern from Bereshit to Revelation. All right? From Bereshit to Gilgana. I want you to understand. 
And when you open my heart to simple truth, I want to tell you, I want to teach you. It delights me. I don't hold nothing back. I want you to understand. I don't want to show you what I know and you don't know. I show you what I don't know and what we all know now. All right? How about that? It says here in the book of First Kings, Melachim. And when Shalomo, listen, Shalomo's house as he began to build uh, the tabernacle of Yah, it is the epitome of whom we are. Was not Shalomo a man of wisdom? Did he not have the mind of Yah? Sure he did. It was only until the Tazmuth, the adulterous abomination of God, Worship that corrupt the man. And that's what corrupt us. We began to esteem ourselves. Uh, think we got something. We have much. And we love a damn thing. You can understand this with a few simple sessions. It's a laborious task. Laboring days and months and years. It's almost like a mathematical problem. That, that's what's his name. What, what was that went out there was sending all these bombs over? Two Americans and killing them. I can't think of his name. It's not with a K. I know his name, but I just can't. What's his name? He moved out there in Montana, lived in a shack. He was a math professor. He had worked on a math problem, I think, for about 12, 15 years. He thought he had it right. When the scholars and the professor, professors began to uh, uh, survey it, they found out that he made a mistake. And he became a recluse. So we don't get the wisdom of this without the injection of others and hearing others to understand the dynamics of it. I want you to hear this, and I'm going to stop here because it's vitally important for the next, next aspect, and which will brach you mightily. All right, Yisrael, Zechariah, again, 414, he says that these are the ones that stand, or mad. That's what it says, right? These two, they stand by the sovereign of the whole house of the whole earth, and the two witnesses shall come. I'm going to abruptly stop there. Hallelujah. Yeah. May Yah rest upon, his strength rest upon you, Yisrael. Yah, Yah rock you all for the wonderful gathering today here in Yerushalayim. May he strengthen us all in Yahshua's mighty name. We shall have a great time in Yahshua HaMashiach. Are you glad? Yeah. I am. Listen, I am happy. I see because I'm happy. Oh, I am. I sing because I am free in your sure His eyes upon the sparrow. And I do know that he watches over me. Let us stand to our feet. I'm happy. I'm alive. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. In all things this Shabbat are Yahweh brach you. Yeshua's mighty name and the strength of our covenant, the Brits, unto Yisra'ya, we brach you. And say Toda for all things. Strengthen your people, heal us, and Ara'ach, Gaitan, Tachem. And all of those are Janice and all of the beautiful Baptists are on there with her in Canada, all of our friends, we pray for them, our Ach Thomas, our Ach Jacob, and Flora, our precious Beth. All these years she's been so faithful, our Ochot Kab, never seen her, very quiet, yeah. I do pray one day that we see this Beth of Tizayon, our Ach Nikaya, his family, and all Yisraya, our friend, there in Texas, Jacob, all Yisraya. Our friend Achdaiwi Nesha there in Scotland, and all the house, the family of Yisraya, Zachen Yesha, Zachen Yeshuran, our enemies, we brach you. I do, ya. I told you for all my enemies. In the blessed name of Assurance, in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. 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 Ya brach Yisraya.